In addition to coding, I also created memos to record my thoughts as I was working through the articles and analyzing them. To do that, in the home toolbar, you would go to memos and you would open the memo manager. Now you can see here, I have several of the memos that I've created throughout the process. Some of them are free memos, which means that they are not connected to any code or document. Some of them are linked to codes or documents and you can see this in the grounded listing. One example is the problem of sameness. And if we double click on this, we can open the memo and see. I wrote the first section of this memo on April 30th of 2015 that recorded my thinking at the time. And then again, on February in 2016, I added more to the memo itself. To create a new memo, you would go in the memo manager, create free memo. You would title the memo, whatever you wanted to title it, press create and then have the opportunity to type in any information. At times, I copied and pasted the Microsoft Word files that I had written about the articles as memos if necessary. There are uh, several different ways that you can use the Memo Manager to your benefit. After I had coded all of the articles, I then organized the codes into initial categories. To do this, I opened the Code Manager to see a list of all my codes. Early on in the project, these prefixes that you see here were not there. I actually added those in. If we look at this code, if we right click and rename it, I'll just delete this prefix. And you can see that in the beginning of this project, the codes all looked like this. But I wanted to organize them in a way that represented itself in the listing of the codebook. And so to do that and organize my codes by category, I actually added the prefixes to keep all the categories together. To do that, I right click on the code name and I added a prefix. For this code, the prefix CHAL was used to represent challenges. And I used this prefix because I noted that when authors discussed clear goals and ground rules, they discussed it in the context of it being a challenge for interfaith dialogue to have these, either to develop them or how interfaith dialogue did not go very well if there were not clear goals and ground rules, but it seemed to be a practical challenge of interfaith dialogue. I then renamed the codes according to these prefixes, and you can see in the listing in the code manager that if you organize the codes alphabetically, every code in one category will show up together. Challenges, definitions, dialogue theory, empirical studies on dialogue. This is just the naming system that enabled me to organize the codes in the listing by the categories that they fit into. The final phase of this stage was to write the first draft of the literature review. The way that I went about this was to, in 3A, you can see it says extract coded literature by category. Every code that was created in phase 2 was outputted with their code and quotation into the editor, and I did this according to the categories. So as an example, let's say I want to get an output of all the codes in the category for challenges. I highlighted the first code in the list. And I'm going to scroll down to the end of the codes for the category challenges. I'm going to hold shift, select all of these codes, and then at the top toolbar, I'm going to create a code report. I want the code report for the selected items. I want the date and the users that created them. I want any comments connected to them, and I want the quotation with the content of the quotation. So I'll create the report, and this is going to take a little while because Atlas is going to retrieve all of the information and I have this report now. The way that I used the report in the literature review was to have the report on one side of the screen and then an open Word document on the other side of the screen that I typed my literature review up in. And we can have document here along with the codes report. Using the output, I wrote the first draft of my literature review, displaying the Atlas output on one side of my screen and Microsoft Word on the other side of the screen. Referring to the coded quotations in the output and the contents of memos where necessary, I wrote my review, which was organized according to the categories of codes. The reason the output is very helpful is because it includes any code definitions you have and specifically the quotations that are connected. So here is where I had my resources right at my fingertips as I was going through and discussing the content of the literature review. I then knew which citations were necessary for each section of the writing.